So before we get to fluids curve, we need to, to make one thing clear is that in chapter seven, we had made an assumption. We looked at these two relations, the price setting and the wage setting relation. And then we made that assumption that price was equal to expected price level, which effectively meant that people always made the correct expectation. Or another way of thinking about this was that price did not vary. So whatever the price is today, let's call it, uh, let me write it down separately. Whatever the price is today will also be the price tomorrow, also be the price day after that, and so on. And in a situation where price is not changing, obviously price is always equal to expected price. That was the assumption that we had made. Today in chapter eight, we're going to let the price level vary. So the first thing we do is we get rid of this assumption. Price and expected price is no longer the same thing. Okay. So let's start with chapter eight. So let's start with doing this. Uh, in chapter seven, we had derived these two relations, PE, function of uz and p is equal to one plus m u. Of course, in chapter eight, we did not have p e. We just had a p, but, and as a result, we were able to derive the, uh, the equilibrium condition, the natural unemployment rate, which was, uh, U Z, uh, U N Z equals to one by one plus N. We were able to derive this only because we assumed P is equal to E. We do not have that assumption anymore. So what does that mean? So let's start uh, step by step. Uh, let's start with uh, start with this. So over here, we have W equals to PE function, whatever. So let's plug in this value of W over here. And then what we will get is price is equal to one plus M times uh, PE. Function of UZ. Let me just take the PE on that side. So we have price equals to expected price times one plus M times the function of U and Z. So what does this tell us? Uh, what this tells us, look at, I'm just going to talk about two relationships and there are much more, but let's focus on these two relationships. In situations where the expected price is going up. As a consumer, as a worker that we are, we expect the price in the future to go up. If that happens, what will we do? We will demand higher wages. If we demand higher wages, we are going to get higher wages, but as a result, the firms are going to increase the price level. So expected price, a rise in expected price is going to actually increase the price. See, this becomes sort of like a self-fulfilling uh, prediction because people expect the price to go up, they act in a way that increases the price level. Well, let's look at another relationship. Suppose unemployment in the economy is going up. If unemployment is going up, what happens to wages? We've done this in chapter seven. When unemployment goes up, wage rate goes down. And when wage rate goes down, firms can sell their goods at a lower price. So price goes down. So effectively, this relationship tells us that there is an inverse relationship between unemployment and price. A 
effectively if unemployment goes up price goes down if unemployment goes up price did i do oh no if unemployment goes down price level goes up and this is basically the foundation of a phillips curve okay so before we get to the phillips curve let's take a look at uh, another thing what we have here is uh, this function uh, from the weight setting relation so what we know is let me use a different ink there is a negative relationship here and a positive relationship here so we are going to write this like this one minus alpha u plus z so see the relationship has not changed if u go up the function itself the value of the function is going down and if z goes up the value of the function is going up so instead of just writing function of u and z we are just going to take a function and work with it so if we use that this equation becomes um, p equals to expected price 1 plus m times 1 minus lambda u plus z i'm not telling you guys what lambda is try to figure that out on your own i'm sure you guys will be able to now this is a relationship about price and unemployment. Let me just write that down. A relationship between price and uh, unemployment. And that is highlighted by this. We have price here and we have unemployment here and there is a negative relationship between them and we've already talked about why that will be the case over here okay now if we play around with this a little bit uh, modify this function a little bit what we can get is uh, okay so we're going to use pi to denote inflation which is basically change in the price level. So basically price in period T, the difference between price in period T and price in period T minus one. It's effectively inflation. And from this function, we can derive this. Inflation in period T is equal to expected inflation in period t plus m plus z minus alpha unemployment in period t now the derivation from here to here is not difficult but it's time consuming so i'm not going to be doing this during the video lecture and i'm not going to expect you guys to derive it during exams but the derivation is given in the appendix of the chapter so feel free to go through it and figure out how it is done but from this let's call this one this from equation one we can derive equation two which effectively tells us that Inflation in period T depends on, negatively depends on, unemployment in period T. And this is the Phillips curve. This is the relationship. So if we were to draw this, So we have, suppose we have unemployment here and we have 
inflation here. Okay. So what we are going to see is a relationship like this. So when unemployment is low, inflation is high. And when unemployment uh, is high, inflation is much lower. So this was what people believed, how the economy operated. Uh, this was prevalent during, let's say, the 1950s and the 1960s. If the belief was that there is a trade-off between inflation and unemployment, and if uh, the government of a country wanted to have low unemployment, they will have to tolerate some level of high, higher form of inflation. And if they wanted to lower their inflation very low, they will have to accept some form of higher unemployment. This rate varied between country to country, but the general relationship that if one goes up, the other will go down, was generally consistent. It, similar thing was observed in a lot of countries, uh, mostly in European and America. And economists were pretty confident that this relationship held. And so all macro decisions were made in the light of what the Phillips curve was telling us. But then around the 1970s, something changed. 